Hildesheim is located in the German state of Lower Saxony. The importance of the city stretches back in time over 1,000 years and is a treasure trove of medieval and Romanesque architecture. Hildesheim is famous for the large and exquisitely restored half-timbered buildings lining its large market, the town's market square. The Butcher's Guildhall on the western side of the Market Square is a faithful reproduction of the 1529 original. This eight-story building with Renaissance decorations is one of the most impressive half-timbered buildings in the world. It is a jewel of the Romanesque, albeit much rebuilt after an air raid late in the Second World War destroyed nearly three-quarters of the city. The Brule area to the south of the old town mostly escaped war damage and has preserved many of its fine, original, half-timbered buildings. Erected between 1246 and 1290 on the marketplace, the Gothic Town Hall retains much of its original appearance, despite all of the changes and additions made over the years. Hildesheim's Rathaus sounds an unmistakably aristocratic note, with its commanding western gable flanked by proud clock and window towers. The Temple House, or Temple Building, has an oddly oriental appearance for an early 14th century edifice in central Germany. This late Gothic 15th century patrician house is adorned with a step gable and turrets added in the 16th century, as was the lovely Renaissance oriel. The Wedekind House, a patrician house from the 16th century, is characterized by its high or neatly carved facade. On the other side of the market square, it presents the broad side of its steep roof, broken by a huge dormer between the gabled tops of two bay windows. The house is covered with allegorical figures. The square is lined by other fine, though plainer examples of half-timbered construction. From the historic marketplace with some of the most beautiful half-timbered houses in the world, we move through the adjacent shopping streets and alleyways, lined with half-timbered houses to reach the site of Hildesheim's two world-renowned churches. The cathedral and the Michaelskirche have been designated World Cultural Heritage Sites by UNESCO. These two remarkable monuments, inseparable from one another and topographically very close, are an exceptional testimony to the religious art of the Holy Roman Empire of the Romanesque era. According to legend, written down in the late 11th century in the Fundatio Ecclesia Hedensimensis, Hildesheim Cathedral was founded by the will of the Virgin Mary herself. In the early 9th century, Charlemagne's son, Louis the Pious, was out hunting one day from his court at nearby Elze when he said mass on the then forested site of the present cathedral. He had brought some relics of the Virgin Mary from the royal chapel for this purpose, which he hung on a tree. Somehow the relics were forgotten and left behind. The imperial chaplain was sent out from Elze to retrieve them, but to his surprise he found he could not budge the reliquary from its place in the tree. Lewis interpreted this as a sign of God's will that they should build a church dedicated to Mary on the site. He also declared that from then on, the Cathedral of the Diocese should be located in Hildesheim instead of at the Court in Elze. The reconstructed exterior of Hildesheim's cathedral primarily reflects the late medieval version of the building, with the Romanesque core and Gothic additions. It is a three-aisled basilica with a crossing transept, choir bay, and east apse enclosed by a cloister. The octagonal crossing tower represents the era of the Prince Bishops of the 18th century. These two churches have been on the UNESCO World Heritage List since 1985. They are magnificent examples of Romanesque architecture and symbolize the creative power of Bishop Benvard, after whom in Germany the Benvardinic period is named.
One of the many remarkable medieval treasures in Hildesheim Cathedral, Bernvard's door is the first set of bronze doors since Roman times to be decorated with sculpture. Dated by its inscription to 1015, the door was commissioned by Abbot Bernvard for St. Michael's Church, but was later moved to the cathedral. At nearly 5 meters in height, Bernvard's door is one of the largest medieval bronze doors and is unique in that each of its two panels were cast as one piece. Suspended above the altar is another notable medieval treasure, the huge wheel-shaped Halitzo chandelier, donated by Bishop Halitzo when he restored the cathedral. Dating from 1061 and measuring over 6 meters in diameter, it is both the oldest and largest of only four such chandeliers to survive. Like most other German churches, Hildesheim Cathedral did not emerge untouched from the Baroque period of the 17th and 18th centuries. The crossing tower was replaced with a new one in the early 18th century, when the interior was transformed into a Baroque hall, decorated with stucco and painting. Amazingly, numerous architectural elements have survived from the Middle Ages, despite multiple changes in taste and the devastating bombing of 1945. After the Second World War, the cathedral had become a burnt-out ruin, with the roof and north side of the nave entirely lost. Rebuilding of the cathedral began in 1950 and was completed in 1960. The most frequently encountered type of church construction from the Romanesque period is that of a basilica with nave and two side aisles, or nave, two side aisles, and two transepts, with the nave aligned in the east-west direction. By the beginning of the 14th century, this type had become the predominant style of church construction throughout Christendom. The term Romanesque in art history refers to the period between 1000 and 1250 AD and was coined in the early 19th century. The Romanesque, along with the Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque periods, is one of the four major European style epochs. Beginning in Central Europe and propagated by churches, monasteries, as well as the 11th century Salier and 12th century Stauffer dynasties, the Romanesque remained the predominant pan-European style of architecture for 200 years. The north transept leads out to the dark and atmospheric cloister from the first half of the 12th century, its corridors covered by low ceilings with groin vaults and an upper gallery. Its three wings envelop the east end of the church, leaving the apse protruding into the courtyard. The Chapel of St. Anne in the center of the cathedral's courtyard was built in the Gothic style beginning in 1321 to host funeral services. The foundation of the diocese is closely connected to the legend of the thousand-year-old rose tree. The mighty rose bush climbs up the exterior wall of the cathedral's apse and is a landmark of the diocese in the city of Hildesheim. The courtyard was long used for burials of the cathedral chapter, and indeed many old tombstones can be found scattered about there. The oldest, dating from the early Middle Ages, can be found in the north section next to the entrance. Founded in 1010 AD, the Church of St. Michael towers like a castle in the sky above the historic city center of Hildesheim. It is widely considered the finest example of Ottonian Romanesque architecture. The imposing multi-towered structure, which crowns a hill in the west end of the city, is also home to many pieces of precious medieval art. Construction on St. Michael's Church began in about 1010 by Bishop Benvard, as a church for the Benedictine monks the bishop had brought from Cologne. The church was completed in 1033. Bishop Bernvard is believed to have contributed a great deal to the design of the church. 
The bishop visited Rome with Holy Roman Emperor Otto III in 1001, where he stayed in Otto's imperial palace near Santa Sabina. That basilica's 5th century carved wooden doors may have influenced Bernward's bronze doors for St. Michael's. In addition to his familiarity with Rome's basilicas, Bernvard was subdeacon at Mainz during the construction of Mainz Cathedral, and some scholars see strong similarities between that imperial cathedral and the Michaelskirche. St. Michael's Church underwent some later renovations, including repairs and additions in 1186, under Bishop Adalog after a fire. The Michaelskirche of Hildesheim exemplifies Etonian Romanesque architecture, although it is unique in some ways as well. It is a two-ended basilica with two choirs and two transepts. Each transept has a large square crossing tower and flanking round staircase towers. In the nave and transepts, the crossing square, under both the large towers, is used as the basic unit of measurement. The nave is made of three of these squares, each of which has pillars at its four corners. A few of the original capitals survive from about 1186. They are of the type known as cushion capitals, a new development here that later became widespread in Romanesque churches. The arches are decorated with alternating red and white stones, elements that are characteristic of Ottonian architecture. The monumentality of Ottonian church interiors is connected to the fact that until the middle of the 11th century, wooden nave ceilings were the standard and only the side aisles were vaulted. The painted wooden ceiling of the nave is a rare and beautiful relic dating from about 1230. It has survived the centuries thanks to its removal in 1943, before wartime bombing destroyed much of the church.